Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 24B. This is the second of two tutorials focused on accounting for goodwill. Tutorial 24A reviewed accounting for recognizing goodwill and this tutorial will review the impairment of goodwill under both ASPE and IFRS. There are two learning objectives for this tutorial. First, to review the testing and recording of goodwill impairment under ASPE and second, to review testing and recording of goodwill impairment under IFRS. This tutorial continues with the SpectreCorp example that was used for tutorial 24A, so please make sure that you have downloaded the file and reviewed the information before proceeding. In tutorial 24A, we covered requirements 1 and 2, and now in 24B, this tutorial, we will cover requirement 3, which will require us to account for any impairment of goodwill under ASPE and IFRS. Okay, so where tutorial 24A focused on the acquisition of the net assets of a company and the recognition of goodwill, we now zoom to the end of December 31st, 2022, where a review of all of Spectre's asset values was conducted. And that review determined that the carrying value of the cash generating unit, that's what CGU is, is a cash generating unit. So make sure that you review the terminology. So the review of the CGU, including goodwill, determined the value to be $418,440. The fair value of the CGU was determined to be $395,000, less cost to sell of 10% of that fair value. In addition, the CGU is expected to generate 20,000 in net annual cash flows over the next 20 years, and Spectre uses a discount rate of 5%. So what we're going to have to do is record any impairment of goodwill under ASPE. Okay, so the first step involves conducting an ASPE impairment test, and how we do that is simply by comparing the carrying value of the cash generating unit, including goodwill, versus the fair value of the CGU. And we see from the data that the carrying value is $418,440. Then the data tells us that the fair value of the CGU is $395,000. An important thing to note here is that under ASPE, we exclude the cost of disposal or cost to sell. And this was exactly what we did when we were determining goodwill for property, plant and equipment assets. We excluded cost to sell. Those are included only for testing of impairment under IFRS. So now that we have determined what the carrying value is and what the fair value is, we can ask ourselves the question, is the carrying value greater than the fair value? In this case, it is. Right? We're carrying the goodwill at 418440 and the fair value is only 395000 Therefore, we ask then, is the goodwill impaired? And it is, again, because uh, it's being carried for more than its fair value. So once we take the carrying value less the fair value, we have a goodwill impairment loss of $23,440. Step two is to record the impairment. So we will debit loss on impairment of goodwill for $23,440 and credit accumulated impairment losses for goodwill for $23,440. And now just to summarize all this together, if we wanted to see what it would look like on a balance sheet, of course, under non-current assets, after all the property, plant, and equipment assets, we would have goodwill with an original value of $140,200. And that was from tutorial 24A. You may want to review that again to see how that was calculated. And then less accumulated impairment losses of $23,440 leaving us with 116,760 as the carrying value for goodwill. So now we can proceed with requirement 3B under IFRS. The problem is very much the same, except now we will include the cost to sell, which in this case is 10% of the fair value. Remember, ASPE does not include cost to sell in the calculations and the determination of impairment, whereas IFRS does include cost to sell. And we will be using discounted cash flows, and so we have an expected annual net cash flow of 28,000 over the next 20 years with a discount rate of 5%. So ASPE didn't require us to calculate discounted cash flows, but IFRS will. So our first step here is to conduct an IFRS impairment test. And in order to do that, we're going to compare the carrying value to the recoverable amount. And as we have seen with previous tutorials in calculation of impairment, the recoverable amount is calculated as the greater of the value in use, which is also known as the discounted cash flows. So the greater of the value in use and the fair value less cost to sell. We begin with our carrying value of $418,440.
Next, we will determine the value in use, and the value in use is going to be based on all of the additional data that was provided in that requirement. So we have 20 periods, so you're going to put 20N in your calculator, a discount rate of 5I, annual payments of $28,000, which is what the expected cash flow is to be, and at the end of the useful life of the asset, there would be disposal costs of 10% of the fair value. That will result in a present value of $334,055, and that's what the value in use is. Next, we will look at the fair value less cost to sell. The fair value is determined to be $395,000 less the cost to sell of $39,500, which is 10% of the $395,000, giving us $355,500. What we have just done basically is uh, presented all the information we need to determine the recoverable amount. And that recoverable amount, of course, is the greater of the value in use or the fair value, less cost to sell. And because 355,500 is greater than 334,055, that means our recoverable value is based on the fair value, less cost to sell. And so that gets carried down here. In calculating our impairment loss for goodwill, we're simply going to take the difference between the carrying value of 418,440 and subtract the recoverable amount of 355,500. If you choose, uh, you could do it the other way where you take the recoverable amount of 355,500 and subtract the carrying value of 418,440 and you'll end up with a negative value of 62,940. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we think of goodwill in terms of absolute value. So however you choose to do the mathematics, the point is we have a goodwill impairment loss of $62,940. Finally, we will do a journal entry for it. So the same as under ASPI, we'll debit a loss on impairment of goodwill for 62,940 and credit accumulated impairment losses for goodwill for the same amount. And so now we have all the summary data with us here in one spot for you to review. If we want to see what the balance sheet would look like, uh, as we did under ASPI, we have a section for a goodwill of 140,200 and less accumulated impairment losses of 62,940, leaving us with a carrying value of goodwill of $77,260, and we are done. And now we can conclude with some key points to remember. First is that goodwill is actually not amortized, but rather it must be tested annually for impairment. And any reversals of impairment are not permitted under either ASPI or IFRS. So once we've recorded an impairment on goodwill, we can't go back. We must always conduct a goodwill impairment test before attempting to calculate or record any impairment. Sometimes students jump right in and want to calculate the impairment, but we have to determine whether or not impairment exists first, then we can calculate the impairment. So under ASPI, we will compare the carrying value versus the fair value, and remember that the fair value of the cash generating unit excludes disposal costs. The disposal costs are included in the IFRS test. And so if the carrying value is greater than the fair value, then we have impairment. This makes sense, right? If something is only worth 100,000 and we're carrying it at 150,000, we have impairment. And then the opposite is true. If the carrying value is less than the fair value, then we don't have impairment. The IFRS test looks at comparing the carrying value versus the recoverable amount. And remember that recoverable amount is the greater of the value in use, which are the discounted cash flows, and the fair value less cost to sell. Similar to the way we come up to a conclusion is similar under ASPI. As under ASPI, if the carrying value is greater than the recoverable amount, then we have impairment. If the carrying value is less than the recoverable amount, then we do not have impairment. So if the recovery test determined that there was impairment, we can calculate impairment as follows. Under ASPI, we simply take the fair value minus the carrying value, and that's our impairment amount. Under IFRS, we take the recoverable amount minus the carrying value, and that's the impairment. So this concludes tutorial 24B on accounting for impairment of goodwill. We hope you found it useful.